So we're going to review again. So <clears throat> today I'm going to go over and basically what we're going to learn today. Today's lesson is stated 1 2022. Um, what you're going to learn from this lesson today is number one, we're going to learn how to identify a fraction. Okay, you're going to look at a fraction and identify the parts of a fraction or identify what a fraction is. The second thing we're going to learn to do is understand how the fractions in a word problem involve addition, how they work in a word problem where you have to add them up together. So you'll understand how you add them up and if you're supposed to add them up, determining how you look at the word problem and what wording the word problem says. Third, third thing we're going to learn is adding them up together and carrying out that operation with different denominations. So you're going to learn like 3 fourths plus 1 eighth. The bottom number, which is the denominator, is not going to be the same. It's going to be different, okay? So you're going to learn that. I'm going to teach you that steps today. And number four, <clears throat> you're going to learn how to create a visual representation of a fraction. I gave you a visual graphic organizer you have right there. So you need to be like 30 seconds and kind of look at that really quickly. And Dylan, I think you have yours there. And kind of look at it and kind of get a visual sense of what a fraction looks like when it's in a graphic image, so to speak, okay? And the last thing, step number five, is you're going to learn how to find the lowest common denominator, okay? The least common denominator, I should say. I put lowest, but least. Lowest or least are the same things. That's really important here, okay? Just to reiterate really quickly, um, before I wait for our two students, you guys know we're hitting into middle school. We have less than six months, and you're going to be in middle school before you know it. So it's imperative, it's very important that you master your basic math skills. Learning fractions is a very basic math skill, and you'll be expected to know when you get to middle school. So I can't emphasize that enough. Try to work on it, practice, 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 and learn how to master these things, okay? Today we're gonna go, the lesson's gonna be in three parts. Number one, I'm gonna do this for you. We're gonna review number one, which we did over and over, okay? But I'm gonna be doing the talking, so don't worry about doing number one. Number two, we're gonna be doing it together. I'm gonna ask you some questions, and I'm gonna help you fill in the missing blanks for part number two. Part three, you're doing it by yourself with your partner. So Dylan and Diego, you guys can work on it by yourselves. Um, Nathan, I'm sorry, you don't have a partner today, but you can work on it out by yourselves. And I'm just gonna walk around and see what you guys are collaborating about, okay? I'm gonna time you about maybe three minutes for that exercise when we get to it. So I'm gonna start with part one, I'm gonna explain, okay? Basically, this is a fraction, one half. That's the basic fraction you're gonna find. Okay, a fraction's always got a numerator and a denominator. It's always important to know the numerator always goes on top and the denominator is always on the bottom. Okay, so the numerator and the denominator. Now, throughout the day, I'll keep this up so you can see it after I take these two uh, things down here. This is my graphic image right there. I have my circle. I cut it into two parts, one, two. One of them is shaded. The other one is not shaded. That right there, the one that's shaded, is the numerator because it's one out of two that's been shaded. So that's considered one out of two. That's considered my numerator, okay? So I look at my fraction, then I look at my picture, and I try to associate what the picture means. For example, you have your graphic there, one out of eight. So one out of eight is, is filled in. One out of two is filled in. And one out of four is filled in, okay? So that's kind of how you know, okay? Now we're gonna talk about um, our word problem. So let's look at the word problem I wrote here, and I'm gonna read it for you really fast, and then we're gonna solve it using our steps that I taught you guys when you first started with me. <clears throat> Peggy has to make cookies. She has a half cup of flour, okay? And she still needs two thirds a cup of flour, okay? How much does she need all together? So basically what I just did is I looked at my key numbers and I circled my key fractions in the problem. I know I have this and I have that. Those are numbers or fractions, and I know I'm going to be using them, so I circle those. Then I underline my question, how much would she need altogether? There's my question. It was already underlined, so I did step two. Now I'm going to move on to step three. Did I box any math action words? I did, so I boxed my math action word altogether. So I'm thinking in my mind already, if I'm thinking altogether, I'm thinking altogether, that must be an addition problem, okay? because that sounds to me like, oh, I have to add this up. So I go to step four, and I'm gonna evaluate the steps I have to take. So I'm thinking, okay, it's all together. So what I wanna do is I'm taking my one half, I'm taking my two thirds, I'm gonna put it all together, so I'm gonna use addition. So what I started here, the unique thing is you put one half, 
and on top I put one two thirds on the bottom and I should have drew a line right there. I drew my line just like that and I'm ready to add up those two like I did. Now you can see right here that the two and three have different denominators so I can't add them up. Oh, okay, what do I do now? I can't add them up. I want them to be the same but they're not. I have to make them the same. That's where I come in and I find my LCD. Okay. And I want you to copy this down today before you leave. I want you to copy down LCD. I want you to put down the acronym and I want you to write LC, the least common denominator. Not now, but when we, towards the end of the lesson, because that's very key that you have to know, okay? So now I'm thinking, okay, what number? I'm thinking in my mind, okay, I have two and I have three. Well, what's the lowest number or denominator that two and three can both go into? Hmm. And I'm thinking real quickly, I know six, I use six. So I set up another set of fractions on the side there that I can add up together. They both have six. Why do I use six? Because they're both the same, and now I can add them up. But before I do that, I have to find the numerator before I can do that. This is the numerator, okay, right there. So what I wanna do is I wanna go three divided by six is gonna give me two. Two times two is gonna give me four. So I have four over six. Then. I have two divided by six is gonna give me three. Three times one is three. So I have both my numerators ready. I have three sixes and I have four sixes. Now I can add them up. I feel comfortable with that. So I take, I always add, when you add fractions, you always add up the numerators together. Do not worry about the denominators. Just make sure that they're the same so you can add them up properly, right? Three plus four is gonna give me seven. Therefore, I'm gonna get seven sixes, okay? I take this, so she needs seven sticks of a cup of flour, okay? Go ahead and grab your folder, please, and then sit right there, ladies, and get your folders out. Thank you so much, okay? Now I take my seven over six, and I can take six divided by seven. Six goes into seven one time. I have one left over, and I have six. My denominator always stays the same, like I said, okay? Therefore, that means it's one and one six. That means that she needs one and one six cup of flour all together, okay? All I did with these two is I changed the denominator. I made it in sixes so I can simply add it up, okay? So, moving on to number two. I'm gonna show this part here. Here we go. This is where I'm gonna get some help from you. All right, I have my fraction here. There's the fraction I'm working with. So let's start with this one right here. Who can tell me what the three is called? and I'm gonna call on somebody. Yes sir, Nathan, what is that called? Denominator. I'm sorry? The numerator. The numerator, very good. Number three is called the numerator. Good, you identified the part correctly. Excellent, this is the correct pin, or the other pin. Always happens. All right, so there's my numerator. Very good. Okay, what is the four called in this one? Yes, Nathan. Yeah. Tell her. Tell her. Sorry, man. What? Denominator. Denominator. Excellent. So you labeled that part. Very good. You got it. That's the denominator. Okay. So I have my circle here. I have my, it's in fours. Um, how many, um, how many um, parts of that four do I have to shade in? Yes, Dylan. Um, three of them. Three of them. Very good. So I'll take a yellow and I'm going to shade three of them in. Very good. Okay, this is not very bright. So I'll use an orange one over here. <clears throat> so three out of four are gonna get shaded in, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so now I'm ready to, that's the one fraction I'm gonna work with. Now I'm ready to read my word problem, okay? Who would like to read the word problem for me? Who'd like to volunteer? Go ahead, Nathan, go ahead and read it. Devin has three fourths in, inch of string. Inch is a string, okay. Got it, okay. He needed one eighth inch more. Okay. How much string would he need in total? Okay, great. So what are my, now that I read the word problem, what are my first steps according to our charter? What do we first need to do? What's our first step? Circle the key numbers. In this case, which ones are they? Three fourths and one eighth. Okay, very good. So I'm going to circle my key number fraction. Very good. Good. 
What's my next step? Uh, Diego? Underline the underline like the what's it called? Uh, no, look the, the the question. Underline the question. Yeah. Where's my question here? Diego. How much How would you need total? How much would you need total? Exactly. Okay. Okay. I'm on step number three. What's my third step, Ashley? What do I have to do? I'm gonna call Ashley since she came, and you can just look at that chart right there. <clears throat> Number three, step number three. What do I get? Plot the math equation. Okay, in this case, what would be my math action word for problem number two, you guys? Your math. Uh, total. Total. Total is a math action word. Very good. That means to add. Excellent. Very good. Now, um, that leads me to number four. So, what steps do I have to do at this point? What am I going to add? Evaluate what steps do I take? Evaluate what steps I take. Okay. So what do I have to do at this point? What do I do? Um, add both of them. Okay, great. So I'm going to take three fourths plus one over eight. Now remember, when you write your fraction, you always do horizontally, up to down, down um, in a horizontal fashion. You're never going to go vertical because that's only when you do multiplication and division. But in basic fractions with addition, you always do the top. Always go from top to bottom, okay? Great, now, what's my next step? The answer is four twelfths. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna wanna add the three to the one, which gives you four. Uh-huh. And then the four to the eight, that gives you 12. Um, okay, right now, what you need to do is, actually you need to be, find, first find your least common denominator, okay? Good try, that was a good try. What I wanna do is I first wanna make sure I have my little set up my other fractions and I have to make sure both denominators are the same before I can add them up, okay? You can't add them up if this is different than that one. You just can't do it. People try it because it seems like it's basic addition. It's not. When you're adding fractions, and Ms. Solis said, and I totally agree, actions are abstract, which means we can't really see them as problems. They're different. So I like to rely, we, we're teaching now about visuals. That's why I'm giving you guys visualization of a fraction. It makes more sense. If you can't really see a fraction, it's really hard to kind of determine how we can add them up. So to make that easier, we change the denomination. And remember, that's why I had you recite those basic parts. So what number, and this is the step here, what number can eight and four go into? The highest number that eight and four can be divided that into? Hmm? Can be divided into? That can divide into, hmm? Yeah, it's gotta be eight. Higher than eight, but less than, you know, it's gotta be a little higher than eight. So just think of a number that four and eight can both be divided into equally. 16 is good. 16 is good, okay. Yeah. But let's get a little lower then. That's uh, good, you're on the right 12, track. 12. 12, but eight can't go into 12, so let's get lower than 12. 10. 10, 10 but eight can't go into 10, nor can four, but you're almost there. Nine. Close. Eight. Excellent, eight. Oh, we could just do both eight. Yeah. Exactly. You just made the denomination. You changed the denomination. And now guess what? When you make both eights, you can add them up. Good work. Good job, Diego. Yeah. All right. So now let's start with this simple procedure right there. Okay, and remember, and ladies, you weren't here, so I'm just going to remind you. What's my next step? See if you remember from that first step right there. What do I have to do? Uh, Not just yet. I'm almost ready to add because I have the same the three over to the eight. Well, before I do no, that, I have to divide the bottom. Okay, I've got to take the bottom of the denominator and divide it by this denominator, okay? Good job, That's the step. Uh -huh. times, times three. Times three, six. Yes. Okay. What about this one right here? That's one times one plus four. Yes, good. Now, what is my last step that I have to do? Add both of them. Mm-hmm. Add the numerators or add the denominators? Add the numerators and the denominators. Wait, no, no actually, no. Yeah. Denominators. Good job. No, 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 I'm sorry. The numerators. numerators. Right. So I'm adding these two. Okay, great. And when I do that, what am eight, I going to get? Seven, eight. Seven over eight. Okay. All right. Okay. All I did, all I did with these two strings is I just changed the fraction, I made it smaller, okay? So if I have, this is what, 
let's say I have the string on here real quick. And let's say I have three quarters. Well, we know three quarters. This is three quarters. One, two, three. There's four parts. And I'm going to shade in three of those right there. Okay? And that's going to give me three fourths right there. I'm going to write three fourths. Now, right here, the bottom, the same length, but this one here, this is an eight. So I just go one, two, three, four. Oops, uh, four. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight. Okay, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's an eight. Okay. So adding those together is really tough. Like, what do I do? I can't add those two together. It's gonna be, it's not gonna make sense. It's gonna be all confused. So all I did, basically all you just did, was you just like this. You just made this into eight. Two, four, six, eight. That's all you did. It's still gonna be the same. It's just, you made the fraction smaller, right? And you took this guy and you added it right there. Okay? That's gonna give you seven over eight. That's all you did. Made it smaller, so you can add it up. That's all you really did. It's all confusing at first, like why am I doing this? Well, you have to add the fractions, to add them together, they've got to have the same denominator, okay? And I promise you, when you get to middle school, they're going to be over, and this is going to be dividing these, you're going to be multiplying them, you're going to be doing everything complicated. And so, if you learn the basic fundamentals of this, it's not going to be so bad, okay? All right, here we go. I gave you one to do by yourselves, okay? I'm gonna give you time, I'm gonna give you up three minutes to try to do this on your own. Work with your partner and you can collaborate. Nathan, if you wanna work with them and help them, you're fine. This is collaboration. I'm not gonna help you with this one. You're gonna help yourselves, but you can talk together. If you have a question, feel free to ask your partner. But I'm gonna time you. I'm gonna give you about three minutes, which is fair, okay? <clears throat> I'm gonna walk around, remember, this part right here, give me the parts, the basic parts of that fraction, shade in what you need to shade in right there, and solve the word problem. And work with your partner. You can start now, give you three minutes, okay? <clears throat>
Okay, time's up. struggle a little bit but for the most part I was satisfied because I like how you a lot of you I was noticing the walk around that you guys identified the basic parts so that's the first step what's the one called this this problem here numerator very good what's the three three called this problem Definitely. yes good job so you know the basic parts, that's great. Out of this circle here, I put in three parts. What part do I need to shade in? One. Ashley, what? Four, one. One, very good. That's right, exactly right. One out of three have to be shaded in. Okay. And I'm gonna even put a little arrow there show it's one third one out of three okay so my word problem is a little difficult but let's go over the basic steps first uh, what I do when I um, I'm gonna read it real fast Will ate a third of pizza he's still hungry so he wanted a quarter more of the pizza how much pizza did he have total so um, what's my first step um, what do I have to first do circle my key numbers circle my key numbers Nathan what's my next step Jasmine, what's, I mean, um, Ashley, what's my third step? Bob, mad action. What, what's my actual word in this sense, in this case? Total. Total? So if I evaluate those steps given, <clears throat> you added. I added, excellent, it was total. I totaled it up, very good. This is the part where you guys got a little confused and I didn't explain it right, so I'm gonna explain this part a little bit more, but out of all those steps, <clears throat> at least you learn to identify the problem, you identify the fraction, <coughs> and you knew you had to add them up. Now you just have to carry out the operation. What's up? Um, and three and four can go into 12. Exactly. You just found the denomination for us. Perfect job, Dylan. I had to make it in 12s because a third and a fourth, they're just, there's two, there's no way. They're completely different parts. It's, an, it's impossible, right? But if I make it into 12s so and they're both the same, I can add them up. You can both count to 12. Yeah, I can count 12, exactly. Okay, so now what's my next step? What do I have to do? Now so you got now the, we're the, gonna try to, now we're gonna do one times three. Okay, well no, you have to divide three into 12, though, remember? Three into 12? Uh-huh. So what, how many times can three fit in a 12? How many times? Three, three times. Three times, uh, Four. Four times, okay. Then what's my next step? And then, how many times can four fit into 12? Which would be three, so yeah. four plus three. That, exactly, because three divided by 12 is four, times one is gonna give you four. Mm -hmm. So you got four twelfths and three twelfths, and you're gonna add them up, basically, exactly. So when I add those two up, what am I gonna get? Six. Three, four, so, yeah. three? Seven, you can get seven, seven twelfths, like that, okay? Okay, just like that. That's how you do that, okay? All you basically did, okay, when you think about it, is, and let me see if I can draw this for you. You have your two pizzas here, okay? Okay, now, there's a third, and there's a fourth right here. That's what I'm starting out with. So basically he ate, Will ate a third of that, and then he ate that. And they want to know how much he ate total. Okay, so you know what you do? It's like, well, if you add, add that and that, you're adding parts, it doesn't make any sense to you. That's why it's all confusing. So all you had to do, all you just did, and Dylan did a good job, you take the pizza again, you know what you do? Just make it in 12s, then you can add it up, right? They're both the same. So this is 12. And this is 12, this is four. I'm gonna make six, eight, 10, 12. It's not very good, I know, I'm sorry, but six, eight, 10, 12, okay? And all I did was I go like this. I look at this and I go, I just shade one, two, three, four, and I look at 
that, I go one, two, three, add it together. That's going to give me one, two, three. So he pretty much ate all this pizza right there if you add it up together like that, okay? You break down the denominator. You have to break it down. It cannot be the same. I mean, it's got to be the same. You break it down. If it's different, you can't add it up, okay? But, you know, the mo I am happy that you guys, you know the basic parts. You know what it looks like in a graphic. So now, we want to practice, we're going to do this next week. We're going to be doing this over and over again until we understand it. Then we're going to learn how to get the lowest common denominator. That would be the next plan, okay? Because you now you know about the fraction, and now just adding them up with the different denominator. Do not rely on the same denominator, okay? So, like I said, when you get to middle school, and you're going to be there in like less than six months, your classes are going to get harder, your teachers are going to get harder, and the um, it's going to be a lot different. So you have to really, really, really focus on your basic math skills. Learning fractions is a basic math skill that I really want to, to stress on you guys. So when you leave here, you're like, okay, I got this, I'm ready. You have some, some basic foundation, okay? So good job, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, we'll make sure to get you some in for 